my friends welcome to my channel focusing free cat today i want to build bike chain and i want to use the free cat's newest release free cat one version release candidate two it's been released like a couple days ago and over the last couple of weeks i've been working on assembly workbench where i did not show how i built the model and before that i built a lot of models i did not show the assembly workbench so today i want to start from ground up i want to build the model and show it uh, how i did the assembly on that model so today's model be a smaller one but it will cover from from beginning to the end and with that let's go ahead and find an image so here is an image it says back chain is normally half an inch that one unit is like half an inch uh, long and then we'll have to build actually basically one of these plates the middle spacer and two of these dowels or like one dowel so actually the whole bike chain will be built out of three parts the side the dowel the pin and the mid spacer so let's start in part workbench uh, obviously can be done for design as well so th there is no debate about that but i want to believe i want to start work in part workbench for this model i'm gonna work on xz plane you can pick yz as well doesn't matter and then i want to work on that on that one the side plate right and i think i saw half an inch between these two so that's about 12.5 12 millimeters right okay and then let's make them symmetric by the origin so s on the keyboard and then okay let's cover it up so we make it something like this and then maybe okay bring it an arc in the middle and then make it a connection between these two by another arc all right so let's clean it up a little bit so let's go ahead and apply these dimension as say four millimeter and I want to make these two equal. So this is the hole that goes through the side. And this one, I want to say this is little more than four. Let's say it is six millimeter. Yeah, we will come back to it, right? And this one, I want to make it, I want to make them equal first. So E on the keyboard, select these two and then E on the keyboard that makes it equal. And then tangency, I want to apply tangency in this connection. So the T on the keyboard brings in the tangency and apply tangency in here. And now we can go about, oopsie. Maybe only one. Right, let's make this to horizontal maybe we can do only with one arc make these two coincidence see on the keyboard see on the keyboard and then make it tangent right, let's see how it looks if i make them equal it looks okay not bad so we will do the same thing on this side connect it be an arc and then make it tangent and then make them equal all right that's the that's the side unit but looks a little fat so maybe we bring it down to four millimeter that's little too much maybe five yeah that's kind of like the sweet spot i'm going to go with all right, so that is our first unit built. I'm going to say sketch side plate, right? 
and then let's go ahead and extrude that for two millimeter i don't want to apply symmetric right now let's see how it looks all right it looks great pretty cool and now i want to go get in this sketch and say rename these constraints so this is i'm say unit length notice how i did not put any space in there and okay let me show you what it does so we go to the side plate the sketch and the data tab come to the sketch group and under constraint now you can see the unit length it says 12 millimeter and then there are another group it says unnamed constraint 7 4 millimeter constraint 9 5 millimeter so these are the ones that we did not any provide any name with this is the one that we just named it so i am going to go ahead and name this one say outer radius and this is say hole or dowel diameter dowel diameter because i wonder if i want to come back to it to do some iteration i can now just up update this from here and that way i don't have to get into the sketch kind of make it a efficient iteration process so this is going to be side plate i think we are done with that all right now i want to go ahead and make a dowel pin this this is the one right this will go in here so the the radius should match with what we said here dowel diameter is four millimeter the radius is two millimeter i can go ahead and actually formula it with and connect it from there so it's sketch side plate dot constraints dot dowel dia divided by two so that way now every time i come here and then make that hole little smaller this dowel pin will be smaller as well or like make it bigger right and the, the dowel pin will be changing so now that one is done as well no i want to work on the length the cylinder length is height 10 millimeter let's keep it 10 millimeter for now we'll come back to it so now that we'll have to come back to this and then i'm going to say rename that as dowel not sure if that's what it's called in the industry but let's go with that for now and then i remember talking about this uh, middle spacer that will be wearing over this dowel pin so there will be another tube and outer radius the inner radius would be two millimeter that we know for sure so this is going to be the same sketch side plate dot constraints dot dowel dia divided by two so that is going to be the inner radius so outer radius would be a little bit more than that say 3.5 millimeter so we can go ahead and say this is all right what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and copy this thing and make a relationship with that say plus 1.5 millimeter i'll have to go ahead and say millimeter in there all right and then the so length wise height will have to come back to make it a formula for now let's say this is two millimeter okay so we have so this is the mid spacer now we have three parts that will be repeating over and over again to make it a chain now i want to focus on this image one more time so think about it in action in the, in the action this inner side the inner two plates the mid span and this this middle plate the mid spacer and these two dowel pins they are not doing anything any movement like you know respect to each other they are kind of like a fixed unit this middle plate and then these outer two sides are connected with this rotation revolve joint like revolute joint so we can say this piece this inside is one fixed joint 
uh, this inside is another fixed unit and then these two outer plates will be using the same plates they are the one doing all the movement so if we think about that we can go ahead and make this inside fixed unit as as its own unit and then use use that in our advantage so we, with that thought i want to save this as our sub assembly like you know a sub unit so i'm going to go ahead and save this named it as middle unit and now i will create that that mini unit that will be using in the assembly so let's go ahead and hide this right and then add assembly and then rename that as sub assembly mid unit All right. and let's start with adding a towel yeah why not maybe add another one so we've got two dowels added the second one we want to move it out somewhere there All right and then add a mid spacer two of them right and let's work on this so the mid spacer in in practice they although they will be a, acting as a fixed unit they are revolving so we can say this is going to be a revolute joint between these two if you want to make them fixed to each other you can do that as well uh, it's the same principle all right I'm going to go ahead and make these two revolute as well. So now the way I selected them, it is coming up in the in the middle anyway. So let me show that one more time. All right. So there is a way how you can select these two pieces. So there is this revolute joints, right? And I can say I'm selecting now it's on this edge right and then if i come here and then select it on the edge the these two edges will be matched not that it's a big matter you can offset it here and there anyway but that's one way if you want to match the the mating plane want to be in the middle what you would have to do is you'll have to select this inside space so that way this axis is coming up in the middle right and do the same here so now if you come over here it's in the middle you can go on the end end so there are like three predetermined position two ends one in the middle if you select like that it will be it will be easy for you all right now here we got two middle parts done let's add our side plates so one two got two sides plate added let's move them out of our way and now i want to add this side plate on one side the other one on the other side so this will be revolute joint again so i can select this edge this edge right here and let's say this edge right so now that edge is kind of like it's in the that edge is used as the mating surface hit ok now you can see this is moving pretty cool all right where we are at and now let's go ahead and fix this one in there too so let's take the revolute joint and take that outside it that that in that inside one and take this one all right we got our basic unit sorted out I want to continue our work so take this edge take this one it's going other way doesn't matter it's a revolute joint so we can bring it over here and do what we just did again so there and there and looks like it's not matching up so flip it up okay something's happening here so we want to match maybe i want to bring it around so it's not getting confused too much i've seen that happening right uh, all right so take this inside edge 
and this edge hit ok yeah the software got confused for a bit and but we got everything under control so now we have our first mid unit that will be repeating over and over again so this is the one that we have all the joints are connected we are a blue joint pretty flexible right so that is our first part we got our first part done now i want to go ahead and create another assembly oh looks like we cannot create two assemblies within one model so let's go ahead and open up a new file and save that as the bike chain right and then start with the model now that we have that middle unit opened in this in this panel in this file we can pull units from there right so let me show you what i mean by that so in this bike chain file we don't have any parts built at all all the parts are built in this other file which is open in freecad at this moment and we can go ahead and in this assembly make that one active and start inserting component on the available component list you can see that middle unit that file is available to add here i want to add this sub assembly middle unit as my first unit i'm going to go ahead and add that all right so we got that added all right it is facing top i want to make it actually face it like this and then maybe yeah so we got our first unit added now here is the disclaimer part because we are adding another assembly into this assembly that that flexibility is not there anymore like remember how we built this and then it was rotating around this pivot it's not doing anymore because once you pull units out of another unit uh, the assembly that that inherent assemblyness is gone uh, freecad is working on it as i can understand to make that available in future versions so maybe in future you can see when you are pulling data sub assemblies from other file they are calling it like a flexible sub assemblies so they are working on it not available right now keeping that in mind we will keep adding our parts to make a full bike chain so i all i want to add is two other side plates right and add them here so take this and maybe take this right okay see how that software got confused so maybe flipping it around one one or two times kind of helped all right now you can see this dowel is not sufficient it's not of sufficient length we need to increase that at least by half a millimeter on these both sides to make it a realistic chain so let's go take care of that right now before we forget in the height part it is 10 let's make that 11 see if that Get reflected here oh look at that it is got reflected right away just like that so there is that and now this part is moving around the dowel we have that extension make it feels like a realistic chain and i want to add this one so take this edge take this edge and keep it like that so we have one and a half units of bike chains built now the next step is to build this is to pull in this data this unit one more time so let's go ahead and insert that sub assembly middle unit again move it over here and now add 
with this new part all right now here we, it's a little tricky but we will keep it close and add that as a revolute as well so take that edge and take that edge hit ok so we have two units of this repeating unit connected by two other side plates now it looks like a bike chain kind of gives you the feeling so so the rest of the work All right, looks like I built a pretty long bike chain unit. And this one, it has a lot of components inserted in there. We we'll figured we'll have to come up with some idea to how to kind of organize these parts. Anyway, let's see if our assembly is working. Oh, looks like it is. So, it's funny how it's only pulling one unit. See if it is, all right. So what I say is, now know that this is assembly workbench first version. So over the next, like, you know, maybe four, five, six months, there will be more advancement on this on this uh, workbench and i'm really excited about it but for now the one thing that i can see they can really improve on is how assemblies like this um, behave see in practice if i took this one right this edge and then pulled it outside the whole thing should be straightened up which is not working like that. So because this, uh, my pull is only getting affected until up to this next link. It's not pulling the whole thing. So that would be something I would definitely want to see in the assembly workbench. But until then, look at that. We built a full working chain in assembly workbench and then we only built like three parts and three parts we kept adding them adding them adding them made a full assembly here is this unit that we just built i want to keep it right there as a show i'll also include this on my own self lens library um, actually let's go ahead and do that right now i don't know how that on cell library will work now that we have a side assembly uh, a kind of like a sub assembly middle in it let's figure it out i will go to lens.oncell.com and upload so here by the way if you don't know already i have been building my library in this uh, on cell lens so you will find all my previous works in here if they are not right there already they will be there it's soon I'm, I'm i'm uploading them one by one so this is the one that we want to upload right and yeah now it says 101 missing linked models not able to find middle unit fcsd so what I am going to do is alright. So here's I can what I can do. I can go ahead and upload this middle unit. Actually, let's rename that bike chain middle unit, right? 
and so that should have everything right there i'm gonna go ahead and upload that and then you can download this model on in this same file it has these uh, edges this side which you need and then you can work on it to make a full model so here will be this link i will place this link this link in the description of the video so you can use that to download this and then uh, work on your skill on assembly and actually part building well folks hopefully you will get something out of this session um, again let me know if you have any question comment or suggestion and thank you for watching i'll see you next time